the webinar entitled the Multiplex Lifestyle Analysis using the TCAN Spark Cyto Multimode Plate Reader with Image Based Cytometry. And it will be presented to us by Dr. Christian Overdunner from TCAN, who is a Senior Application Specialist. Christian has a, is a Senior Application Specialist at TCAN Austria and studied molecular biology to PhD level at the University of Salzburg with a strong focus on cell and molecular biology. Christian started working for TCAN Austria as an external scientific consultant in 2005 and joined the organization permanently in 2006. And since then has held several roles, including application scientist in R&D, application specialist and product manager in sales and marketing. And Christian's priorities within TCAN are the multimode microplate reader applications and cell imaging. Thank you so much for taking the time today to present to us the solutions for uh, multiplexed live cell analysis, Benno. Really appreciate your time and effort. And with that, I'll hand over to you to start the presentation. Just as a reminder to everyone who's joined recently, please post your questions in the chat or the Q&A function as part of the webinar. And we'll periodically, as the webinar goes on, address the questions as they arise or at the end. Thank you so much, Benno. Thanks for that very nice introduction and welcome to the audience uh, here from my side. Um, I hope you can already see the, my screen and, and hear me clearly. Um, I will uh, now just give me a second to find. Okay. Yeah, I will now uh, start uh, start with my presentation on uh, the Spark Cido, which is uh, Tekken's flagship multimode reader uh, equipped with a dedicated module uh, for bright field and fluorescence wide field imaging. So as an introduction to the product, uh, I want to take a general look to the workflow. Uh, to, to a typical cell analysis workflow, uh, specifically uh, in, a, in a standard lab, like a typical academic lab. Uh, we all know that um, cell analysis involves a couple of different instruments. Uh, specifically, uh, when working with uh, viable cells, so with uh, live cells, then uh, there is that transfer from the incubator to the different devices, typically including at least a microplate reader, microscope or automated images maybe, and also uh, very often flow cytometry is used to answer uh, biological questions in the field of cell biology. With the Spark Cido, these uh, instruments, including an incubation in an incubator, a plate reader, a microscope, but also to a certain extent a flow cytometer, is all integrated into one device. That does not mean that the Spark Cider would replace all of these instruments or uh, or devices in the lab. That's certainly not possible. But to a certain extent, applications. Uh, and uh, specifically combination of different applications can be performed uh, with this one instrument in one single run. So if you want me to describe the Spark Cido in one sentence, then the Spark Cido would be the only imaging multimode reader that can measure cells in a life environment over a long period of time to provide the results in real time. Yeah. That would be the quick summary. And that includes some unique features and values that we offer with the system. So to give you a very generic overview of the of, of the Spark Cider before diving into all the uh, individual functions and features and also supported applications, what are actually the, the key benefits? So first of all, uh, as it's all about cell analysis, uh, we really took a lot of effort to enable whole well imaging, uh, whole well imaging in 96 and 384 well formats at the very high quality, specifically for bright field imaging. 
And this whole well uh, analysis capability is not only related to the imaging, but also for other detection modes. Uh, we we uh, take care to acquire the signal from all of the cells in the well and not just from a representative selection or area inside the well. The second thing is that we have a complete set of environmental control. So we really keep the cells happy during the whole analytical procedure, yeah, during the whole uh, signal acquisition step. And that does not only include temperature and gas control, but also a solution to avoid evaporation during these long-term um, experiments with living cells inside the device. The third um, value pillar that we have for the Spark Cyto is uh, the multiplexing capability. That means you can combine the dedicated imaging module with all the other uh, standard detection modes that are typical for a multi-mode reader. Uh, so here I'm talking about absorbance, fluorescence, luminescence. This is all very easily uh, combinable with the imaging and allows to really build up complex multiplexing uh, methods. Then all of the results, or all of the data acquired by the system, including the imaging, are delivered in real time. That means um, when it comes up to data acquisition and data presentation, we do not use sequential approaches. We all do it, we do it always simultaneously. In terms of image acquisition, that's of course super relevant because as you uh, all understand, an image acquisition process can take quite a while, specifically if you do a kinetic run. And uh, for standard imaging systems with a sequential approach, you have the image acquisition and then the analysis. So during acquisition, you don't really have any feedback about the final data that you are going to acquire yeah, because the image analysis has not yet started. With the TIC and Spark Cyto, the analysis starts during image acquisition. So it's a parallel process that allows you to uh, get the image analysis data already during the run, during the image acquisition process itself. And that, of course, gives you full control about your experiment. Um, there is not a black box in between. You always have full visibility of, uh, visibility of what, is, what is happening. And finally, uh, related to exactly that feature of real-time control, uh, we, you can also automate a lot, a lot of workflows because the Spark Cyto integrates some automation hardware like integrated uh, microblade lid lifting, like integrated reagent injection. And this allows you to automate complete workflows in a very smart way, not necessarily to increase the throughput, but to reduce the hands-on time yeah, and with that to increase the reproducibility of your experiments. So I will come back to this later in more detail, but just at the beginning, a very rough uh, idea of the values of the product. So the Spark Cyto actually includes all the standard detection modes, as I said, plus additional features, including the imaging, the cell incubation, but also automation features like the reagent and cell dispensing. Here, a list of all the uh, detection modes, additional features and applications that we support. I don't want to bother you with that list and that slide now because we're going to go through all of these details now in uh, the uh, during this presentation here. Um, so let me start with an overview on the standard detection modes, uh, on those things that you would expect from every standard multimode reader. As you will now learn, none of these standard features uh, 
are standard per se. That means they all of them include some very exciting and unique features that make a difference to other products and solutions available on the market. Let me start with the basic detection mode, which is absorbance. Of course, every multi-mode reader can do absorbance, but with the Spark Sido, uh, you work with a dedicated um, a module uh, for absorbance measurements. And this includes um, a proprietary technology, a unique absorbance monochromator design. We call it high speed monochromator. And that allows you to record a spectrum between 200 and 1000 nanometer in less than five seconds. So this is a speed of spectral recording that you would normally expect with a spectrometer. So with a photodiode array based instrument. However, in this case, it's really a dedicated absorbance monochromator. And what does that mean for your application? What does that mean for your daily life? It simply means that a monochromator uh, provides a much better wavelength accuracy and reproducibility than a photodiode array. Also, the signal linearity is much better. And with TKEN, this accuracy and reproducibility, so this quality of absorbance measurement is combined with the speeds. So you have the best of the two worlds. You have a very accurate and therefore also very sensitive absorbance detection mode with the monochromator, but with the speed of a photodiode array. And that tailors the system to nucleic AC quantification or protein quantification in the UV range. Uh, specifically, when, oh, sorry, sorry for that. Specifically, when you combine the system with our nanoquant plate. The nanoquant plate is again a proprietary technology by TKEN. Uh, TKEN was the first manufacturer uh, that came up with a low volume plate in SLS microplate format to be measured in a microplate reader. Uh, today, there are uh, other plates uh, on the market. Still, we have the leadership when it comes up to the performance. So we're offering the lowest detection limit of just one nanogram per microliter. And the nanoquant plate is completely calibration free, where other plates on the market need constant calibration on even a daily basis. And that, of course, decreases the ease of use compared to the nanoquant plate. So uh, combining this absorbance monochromator the quality of the measurement and the speed of the spectrum with a nanoquant plate um, yeah, makes the Spark Sido a perfect solution for low volume nucleic acid and also protein quantifications. In other words, you have a nanodrop integrated into a microplate reader. The next standard detection module is the fluorescence optics. Here uh, we combine a full double monochromator optics with a filter optics in one device. So as you might know, double monochromator based multimode readers for fluorescence are very flexible uh, in terms of wavelength selection. They also offer uh, the scanning capabilities to characterize uh, uh, fluorescence compounds. But many double monochromator based instrument miss the sensitivity to support the more advanced assays like TFRAT and FP assays. For TCAN, first of all, the double monochromator have a very high quality. So uh, the double monochromator themselves support TFRAT and FP measurements, but also they can be combined with filter optics for one and the same measurement. So you could excite your sample with a filter and then use the monochromator optics for the uh, detecting the emission of the, of the assay. With this capability, we completely close the gap between the flexibility of a monochromator and the sensitivity of a filter device, which makes the Spark Sido super exciting for assay development labs because you can characterize your new assay, your new compounds, and then immediately within one device, transfer everything to a screening-like environment with the filter optics. 
Also for the different types of users, we offer a standard module for more common assays and an enhanced module for reading more the screening applications in pharma and uh, drug development. But also the Fusion Optics has some software features specifically for cell based applications like the optimal read function uh, or the well scanning option for the bottom readouts that allow you to really analyze all the cells of the well independent of the distribution of the cells within one well and independent of the confluence rate that you have in your application. So like the whole well imaging, this is something that really dramatically increases the quality and specifically the reproducibility of your experiments. Next thing, luminescence. Also for luminescence, we have a completely dedicated optics. We do not share any other components like detectors with the fluorescence module uh, because we want to have the best possible performance for glow, flash and multicolor luminescence readouts. We offer the largest dynamic range of nine decades uh, because we combine uh, a very sensitive photo counting PMT with uh, OD filter attenuation. That means for low signals, we, we guarantee best possible sensitivity of the detector. The signal will be acquired in counts per second, so we really count every single photon that reaches the detector. We do not deliver relative luminescence units as most of the others, but absolute units in count per second. So you can always compare your experiments as, as an absolute level without any need of any, uh, any control samples. Very important. So with that already, the signal, the, the data quality is uh, is improved or is 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 better than the average, and then um, uh, with uh, 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 with uh, uh, attenuation filters for very high signals, we attenuate the signal before we measure it. That guarantees that we don't overload our highly sensitive photo counting tube, yeah, but still measure the high signals within the same plate, uh, within the same. Uh, linearity uh, of overall nine decades. Also, we have uh, filter wheels installed in the Spark Sido uh, that uh, uh, are overall 38 individual colored filters um, that work together in a way that we allow for spectral scanning in Lumi using these filter wheels. So we can record luminescence spectra like in a monochromator, but with a filter based technology. That means very clear and very nice and smooth peaks for your luminescent signal. Yeah, and also uh, you, you, we are prepared for every possible multicolor Lumi application. So for instance, all breadth applications are supported and all future breadth applications will be easily supported because we have the filters already integrated. Based on these highly sensitive luminescence optics, we have the alpha screen uh, module um, implemented into the Spark Sido. The alpha supports alpha screen, alpha LISA and alpha plex from Perking Elmer. Uh, all of the three S's work. Uh, all of the three S's are easily uh, selectable. So it's just a, a matter of one click in the software and you can start your alpha screen or alpha LISA, alpha plex assay. We have a unique feature here as well, which is a temperature sensor to measure uh, the alpha screen assay temperature per well. You might know that uh, the alpha technology is very sensitive to temperature fluctuations, which is maybe the most critical drawback of this uh, assay technology. And the Tekken readers uh, or the Spark Sido and the Spark are the only ones that can correct for this influence, yeah, for these artifacts. So we basically measure the temperature and then normalize the alpha signal to uh, 23 degrees Celsius which is the temperature optimum for alpha reactions. Also, the speed 
is uh, very uh, very good for that system of below two minutes for a whole 384 well played. So screening light uh, or uh, uh, um, let's say the, the performance easily meet the uh, requirements for a screening lab in this case. Good, so these were the standard detection modes. Um, but uh, to complete the first part of that presentation, uh, I also want to talk about the environmental control. Because such as the standard detection modes, the environmental control is not only available for the Spark Cyto, but also for the Spark. Yeah, Spark is another multimode reader from TCAN that does not include that high end uh, imaging module just a basic imaging module for bright field uh, imaging only, uh, but all the rest of the product is the same. Yeah? So environmental control includes temperature uh, plus gas control. For the gas control, we can control CO2, but also the O2 level uh, down to 0.1%. So with that, you can, of course, much better mimic physiological conditions. You can induce hypoxia. You can uh, do studies with, uh, let's say, non-mammalian organisms or uh, um, yeah, anaerobic or microaerophilic bacteria, yeast, whatever. With uh, the third element of the environmental control, the evaporation protection, you avoid the evaporation specifically of the edges uh, or of the liquid in the outside wells, the very well-known edge effect, you can avoid with that solution. So basically you can plate your own microplate into that uh, cassette, we call it humidity cassette. And in that humidity cassette, there is a moat that you can fill with water uh, and that will function as ev evaporation protection. So. Uh, specifically for long-term experiments up to three days, um, that solution really has a critical effect on your data quality again. And the humidity cassette is again uh, certainly uh, something that you don't get with any other provider than such, uh, such as with TCAN uh, and the Spark and the Spark side too. Because it needs to be combined with a lid lifting technology that is protect, protected by a patent from TCAN. Uh, so we are the only ones that can handle uh, the lids inside the reader. And not only the humidity cassette, but by adding a magnetic sticker to any plastic lid, you can turn the lid into a removable lid. And that allows you to also automate workflows with standard plastic lids inside the multimode reader. For instance, automated injection. You might inject something during a kinetic but sometimes you're not in the lab because it's in the middle of the night. With TCAN, no problem, it will be done automatically. Yeah, beside the environmental control, the standard features, also the accessories uh, are the same between Spark and Spark Cyto, and these are the following ones. It's an injector or dispensing system with two syringe uh, or with two channels, um, different syringe sizes, and um, these injectors can not only uh, inject standard reagents, but also they were tested to inject cell solutions uh, as we offer an additional heater steerer element to keep the cells in solution and also uh, to keep them on temperature. There is an integrated stacker that allows uh, batch runs with non lidded plates. This is nothing for live cell uh, automation, uh, to automate uh, uh, batch runs with living cells. It's for fixed cell plates when combined with the imaging or for any other biochemical readout, absorbents, fluorescence, LUMI, whatever. But you can uh, automate batch runs uh, up to 50 microplates with that solution. And finally, for IQOQ, uh, we have a quality control package, the multi-check plate, to meet the regulatory requirements of the lab. So with this, I want now focus on the imaging capabilities uh, for the Spark Cyto. But before I 
do so. Uh, maybe there are some questions already that we can answer now. If not, I would continue and maybe you uh, have them later, your questions. So do we have questions posted at the moment, Benno? Um, I'm just okay. trying to open the Q&A section. Uh, no, there's no questions as yet, so okay. we can continue. Good. Okay, then I will continue. If you have any, any questions on, of what I just presented, please use the Q&A section. Good, so let's now talk about the imaging capabilities of the Spark Site 2. First of all, what are the hardware elements that we have used to design the module? Uh, first of all, for a better explanation, there is no manual access from user side to these elements. So the the complete hardware of the system is mounted in, into a module that is attached at the bottom side of the reader. You do not have access as a user to the objectives or to the Im imaging channels. The system consists out of uh, um, an objective revolver that holds uh, three different objectives, a 4x, a 2x and a 10x objective. The system can do bright field imaging with a bright field LED that is mounted on uh, top of the microplate well and um, funnels the light through the microplate well, the objectives to the camera. The camera is a CMOS 5 megapixel camera with a large chip size. Uh, that is important for our already mentioned whole well imaging capabilities. I will talk about that, of course, in detail in a couple of minutes. Beside the bright field, the system can also do fluorescence imaging here. Uh, there are four imaging channels available with fixed LEDs and fixed excitation uh, and emission bands. So we call it a four fixed four band dichroic mirror. The benefit is uh, that we are really super fast for multicolor imaging applications. There is no need to move any mechanical component when switching between the channels. And the resulting overlay images so show absolutely no pixel shifts because of that lack of mechanical movement. But again, some more details on that later on. Uh, and finally, there is the autofocus, uh, which is uh, enabled by a separate LED and a patented a proprietary approach uh, to find the autofocus plane in a microplate well. So really the autofocusing is tailored to uh, microplates and not to other sample formats. So let's take a look to details because details always matter. Uh, you might now say, well, I'm missing a 20X. This is what we always hear from our customers. But honestly, um, in the days of digital microscopy, um, the magnification of an objective honestly becomes completely irrelevant. Because with digital zoom, you can magnify the object up to 100x with a 2x objective if you want. So it's not about do you have a 2x, a 4x, a 10x, a 20x, a 40x. The question is uh, regarding the numerical aperture of the objective, but also the pixel resolution of the camera, the tubus lens, the optical resolution. The question is at the end, what is your image quality? Okay. And even more important for many applications, what is the field of view? Because you really want to see a lot of objects and want to analyze them, right? To get the right statistics. So if you just see two, three cells with a good resolution, it does not really help. There must be a compromise. You should see and analyze as many cells with a resolution that is as good as possible. And this is exactly what we tried. And this is why we don't have a 20x, because if you compare the optical resolution that we specify, you see that this is on a level of a 20x, but we have it with a much larger field of view. So that means you can see all the structures, everything as in a 20x, but with an 
like tenfold higher field of view. That means tenfold more objects, cells that can be seen and analyzed. And that's the benefit of the Tekken reader. And just judge yourself uh, uh, during a demo and checking the image quality of our 10X. You will see there is no difference to a typical 20X objective in other systems. When we when it comes up to the uh, four floor of, uh, to the four fluorescence channels, um, these uh, prepare you uh, of course to handle every possible fluorophore uh, that uh, is available in your lab, but also that comes up in the future because uh, you just give it a try. It's like uh, with prefixed channels in general, uh, either the fluorophore perfectly fits into the properties or not. Um, I made experience myself with a lot of different fluorophores and it's not only dependent on the properties, but also on some other things. So basically with that solution, you can handle all the fluorophores out there. The only thing you need to consider that sometimes you can have a so-called crosstalk effect. So you might see a fluorophore uh, in, a, in another channel where you would not expect it. So for instance, propidium iodide, it's red. You image it in a red channel, but you can also see it in the green channel uh, when using the Spark Cyto. So for this, you need to do some kind of crosstalk correction in the software. On the other side, we are super fast for multicolor imaging applications, so we can switch between blue, green and red within a couple of milliseconds without the need of mechanical movements. And therefore, beside being fast, also have no pixel shifts in our images. And yeah, this is actually what pixel shift means. Uh, this is how you would get it in a normal microscope. So with individual filter cubes uh, that need to be moved for every channel within every well, then you would see something like that. Yeah? And with us, it's always perfectly in line. Okay, so that was the hardware and some of the benefits. But beside that, the more straightforward design of the imaging optics, uh, we also offer some proprietary technologies. So things, again, details that make it different to others. And first of all, it's the quality of our whole well imaging specifically for 96 wells. Because as you will all know, uh, if you go uh, or if you image uh, um, 96 well with a, uh, yeah, 1.25x or 2x objective, you have critical shadow effects coming from the meniscus uh, inside the uh, 96 well. Meniscus is very strong in the 96 well, and you never see all the cells at once uh, in a normal microscope. So you need to use different exposure times, uh, but then you miss other areas in the well. So it's really a problem. What we did is uh, with uh, Spark Cyto, uh, we patented an approach um, that we call HDR imaging, so high dynamic range imaging, where we combine images acquired with different exposure times and then put them together to finally get a super flat uh, image of the whole microplate, 96 microplate well. Uh, without any critical uh, artifacts, still you can a little bit see differences in contrast, but these uh, artifacts coming from the meniscus, these severe shadow effects are, are gone. Uh, so with that, we allow a very high quality of bright field images in 96 well acquired with a 2x objective in less than 12 minutes in bright field, but also for fluorescence we can do it uh, in less than eight minutes in this case. So uh, that's for sure a strong benefit. However, you can also measure the 96 well plate with the 4X objective, then it takes four images and yeah, and the image quality uh, 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 even increases. So it's always a matter of speed, yeah, time for image acquisition and image quality, but basically you can get the whole well image then finally also with a 10X if you want. So this is the HDR imaging I just described, the two shadow effects uh, or, the, or the shadow effects that we normally have. 
Yeah? And with the TKIN approach, you get that very flat image. The solution is, of course, not to take the 2x, but it's really the variation of the illumination of the exposure times and the completely proprietary algorithm that we uh, developed by TKIN to put these images together. We use the same approach for 384 wells as well. Uh, here we do a 4x image to acquire the whole well with one image. Uh, also here uh, we apply the HDR because still there are some meniscus effects. And also here uh, we of course offer very high quality and very high speed image acquisition for the whole plate. But if you want to work with other plates like 6 to uh, 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 84 well plates, you can still get the whole well imaging uh, images by simply then tiling together the individual images acquired, for instance, here with a 4x in a 24 well plate. So it will be 20 images that are automatically put together by the software. It's no need for the user to stitch together the images. This is done by us. Yeah? And immediately after the run, uh, in, 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 in the Spark Sido, you get that whole well image put together and, as I explained before, already analyzed for specific applications. So, some of you now might still say, but why do I need a whole well image? Yeah, isn't it good enough to measure the center of the well, so a representative section of the well area? And Yes, in some rare cases you can do so, but in most cases when working with a microplate, it's not good at all because you have effects like exemplified here on that slide. This just shows that after liquid handling, after the addition of, in this case, DMSO, there was locally yeah, an area inside the well where you see an increased level of viability. So only measuring the whole well gives you that information. If you would just measure here in the center, like with every other image out there, you get a wrong result because you have not considered that locally very different area. Okay, so I think that image tells more than a thousand words why a whole well image is required, specifically in a multimode reader. Also, when you do analysis for whole well images, then there is the well border. And in most solutions, you see that well border included in your analysis. We really took care to be able to remove that. So users have control about the well border offset. They can define an offset and therefore um, get rid of that artificial uh, analysis of the well border itself. For instance, for your confluence analysis, uh, you can make sure that uh, yeah, artifacts like the well border are not included in your final result. For those who have cells with a very low contrast, we also offer digital face contrast imaging. So actually, uh, digital face contrast images are acquired together with bright field automatically there will be always available in case and the user does not care or does not need to care and select them uh, yeah, manually, let's say. So if required, just choose the face contrast image in the software and you can then, for instance, export it to third party to do additional analysis or whatever. The autofocus I mentioned is completely proprietary approach. And it does not require any object, any signal inside the cell, so no, ah, inside the well. So no cells are needed. The cells do not to be stained at all. Uh, what the system actually does, it finds the the, the interface between um, the plastic and the liquid uh, 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 exactly there, and, and looks here for for the autofocus plane. Uh, so that makes it super robust. Uh, and uh, also very fast. So just takes two seconds per well to find the autofocus. The autofocus is tailored to 2D, uh, so monolayer applications, but you can add a set focus offset. 
and therefore also, uh, as you will learn later on, can be applied for 3D imaging. There is the auto exposure function in uh, the image acquisition software, so in so-called spark control software, that makes it really easier, easy for the customers to optimize image acquisition. Uh, but also there is, there are uh, capabilities to manually optimize the exposure time if required. Yeah, and with this, I talked around the, the main exciting um, technologies that we use for imaging to make it really easy, yeah, but also with a very high quality. What are the applications that we support with this hardware and these unique technologies? Uh, so, first of all, it's still an open platform. So, whatever uh, would fit yeah, to the properties will also work. But the key applications that we promote and we tailor the system to are, first of all, a confluence analysis and a so-called cell roughness analysis for bright field images, a label-free cell counting algorithm that is artificial intelligent based for cell counting in bright field images. For the fluorescence images, we have the nucleic counting cell viability, yeah? so a cell segmentation in individual channels to support these applications, but also for more complex ap applications where one cell emits more than one signal, uh, like for transfection efficiency or apoptosis, we have dedicated algorithms for. Any other application can be, of course, user-defined if the capabilities of our algorithms and also our hardware uh, fits the application, of course. So for the confluence, uh, I think it's one of the key applications, uh, you, uh, specifically regarding the whole well capability. If you want to study the confluency of a microplate well, you need to investigate the whole well. I think in that, for that application, there is no discussion about just imaging the center well, because we all know that the cells never grow homogeneously over the whole well area. Some cells start at the edges, some cells start in the middle, some grow more in islands, some grow more isolated. You need to have the whole well analysis when you do confluence. But beside confluence, we can also uh, estimate on the cell roughness. And this is extremely interesting, for instance, to investigate cell death or viral infection uh, in a label-free approach. So I have an example for you later related to SARS-CoV-2, uh, uh, where this roughness factor was applied to study uh, early infection with a COVID yeah, uh, and uh, indicate uh, the formation of syncytia. So great uh, capabilities or great potential here for these analysis capabilities because they are completely label-free, just require the bright field image, don't uh, require any staining, and you can do a lot of things with these two features. The next thing is the cell counting. So here we used artificial intelligence, a deep learning algorithm, to teach uh, the system with various cell lines. And uh, what you can see here is, uh, no, sorry, uh, what you can see here is um, that um, on, we tested here, for instance, two cell lines that we have not used to teach the system on, uh, the SARS-2 and, 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 and the uh, MCF cells, and still they show a super high linearity compared with the blue object count uh, and uh, over a broad confluence range. Yeah, so this is the cell number seeded. See over long confluence range, it really shows a very high linearity and comparability with the blue object count. So that means with this functionality, there is no need to stain your cells anymore with Höchst. You can just take the bright field image and then count them in the same, with the almost same performance. 
However, if you don't feel like and still say, no, I just trust the nuclei counting with Höchst, it's another application that you can easily do. And that would be automatically done in, re in real time with our Spark Cyto. So just put in the plate, select the imaging channel, and you will get the number of your nuclei, uh, of your nuclei, nuclei per well immediately after the run. For cell viability, for instance, use uh, green and red uh, labeled uh, uh, cells. So green cells alive, red cells dead, like calcium, propidium, iodide stain, no problem, very easily, automatically done in the Spark Cyto. Transfection efficiency. You can either do it with multicolor analysis using a Höchst counter stain and the, for instance, green fluorescence protein, or you combine it with the bright field label-free cell counting. And then you don't need an additional counter stain. And you can do it in real time over a longer period with living cells. So also transfection efficiency is one of the key applications the Spark Cyto is tailored to. And finally, to, uh, to finish that part, it's all about apoptosis. So system uh, also for all the success stories, uh, and some of them I will present uh, later on, you see that apoptosis is the keyword. Uh, actually, if you would ask me as a scientist, I would say maybe the Spark Cyto is the best solution for apoptosic research because it has so many different capabilities. It can study apoptosis over in real time over a couple of hours and days. It has multiple detection modes, not only including the imaging, but also all the other modes like luminescence that you can apply. And for instance, uh, we work together with Promega and tested all their real-time assays in combination with our imaging module and standard detection modes for long-term apoptosis experiments and analysis. So just to give you a feeling, uh, I will now start this small video here. Uh, it's a little bit dark, maybe just. Why can I not start it now? That's not good. Hmm. Sorry, guys, uh, for that. I will. Yeah. Don't know why I can now not start that video. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Just. Maybe I can start it here. Just give me a second. Sorry. Really want to show you what is possible. So let's do it like that. Sorry. I will now start it again. So as you can see here, don't like the technical problems. OK, so now you see uh, the image in the background yeah, with the cells stained in blue, green and red. And here the analysis of the apoptosis, the viability and the necrotic fraction to develop over time. Yeah? So the images again that we recorded here in the background for each time step we have analyzed and with that generated this night nice data plot, this nice uh, apoptotic scissor, as we might call it uh, in the professional jargon, uh, that that is as expected. OK, so I will now. OK, now continue. As I said, when you have any other application, uh, show you some examples, you can you can do it with a user-defined script and uh, use our algorithm, but also very important to understand, you can always take the images from the Spark Cyto and analyze in any other third-party image analysis program. For instance, many of our customers, collaboration partners use ImageJ. Yeah? If the capabilities of the Spark Cyto in terms of image analysis are not sufficient for them. 
And <clears throat> the REC means real-time experimental control. You can apply, for instance, for cell viability studies, as shown here on this slide. So here we combine all the capabilities of the Spark Sido, including the automated lid lifter and some uh, nice software features that we call kinetic conditioning. With the kinetic conditioning, we can trigger certain actions as soon as thresholds, uh, signal thresholds have been met. So for instance, you define a control well that you monitor over time, and as soon as a certain yeah, data value has reached, you can execute uh, um, an action or a detection or whatever for the whole plate. And that allows you to really automate workflows where you, you normally need to be in the lab and manually trigger those actions. This is all done uh, with our uh, Spark Control software and our image analyzer. The Spark Control is used for all standard detection modes, but it also includes a live viewer mode, so a microscope mode um, that uh, enables you to move through the plate, uh, through the wells, through the channels, change the objectives, um, add some focus offsets, uh, adapt the exposure time, and so on. So it's really like a small microscope uh, for, uh, yeah, individual use, so just to check your plates, take some snapshots, or to really use it for signal acquisition for your uh, automated run. Because the automated run can be just programmed using the method editor of the Spark Control. As you can see here, you have all the detection modes, all the action listed. You just combine them in a very long, oh, in not a very long, but it can be a very long script. So with up to to 10 different labels, detection labels, uh, multiple actions to really do all the multiplexing, uh, also in a kinetic, in, in kinetic loops, so in a kinetic run. Yeah. And then uh, you, as I told you, you always get your results in real time, but for the image analysis part, you wanna make sure that the system uh, did a correct image analysis, no? So we have the image analyzer, which is a dedicated image analysis software from TCAN that can be exclusively used for Spark Sido images. And the goal is to optimize the image analysis step, so to optimize the object mask, as we call it, for the certain applications. For instance, if like here in the nuclei count, you identify not enough objects, you want to get in more cells because they have been missed. You can adjust the sensitivity of the algorithm and then it will, it, it will include the missing cells. Or the other way around, yeah, if you over segment your image, that means if you see some artifacts identified by cells, you can again optimize the settings and you get a perfect nucleic object count. These settings you can later save to Spark Control and for your next run, yeah, these settings have been optimized and you already end up with best possible results for all the upcoming experiments. And this is actually the concept that is described here. So use the live viewer to optimize signal acquisition, acquire the images with analysis in real time, optimize image analysis in the image analyzer and save back the settings for your next run with the method editor. This is how it all works and this reflects the ease of use of the system. And at this point I want to uh, come up with a testimonial from one of our customers who said, uh, so I cite this one customer now, he said the Spark Sido and Spark Control shines by its ease of use. And this is exactly uh, the, the biggest value. We try to make imaging happening for non-imaging experts. For scientists that are used to work with an, I don't know, Perking Alma Opera Phoenix, they might find the Spark Sido uh, not complex enough. Uh, we still have customers who 
use both system uh, as I will show you later, but for a different, uh, 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 let's say, purpose. Good. Uh, we really designed the imaging to uh, be valuable in combination with the other detection modes, yeah? in combination or in the environment of a multi-mode microplate reader. Automation, of course, a big topic for TCAN. For the Spark Cider, you can get a full automation workflow when integrating Spark Cider into our Fluent or, or Evo. Uh, you can uh, do third-party integration if required, or we also find some customized solution for more straightforward automation workflows, like transporting a uh, microplate from an incubator to the reader and back. So with this, I want to finish my presentation or come to an end uh, discussing some success stories. So you now heard quite a, uh, a, a, a product pitch, I would say, uh, but uh, you should also learn how scientists in this world use that system to leverage their research. So first of all, this is a, just a, a, a selection of some of our customers and key opinion leaders. As you see, that ranges from uni, uh, uh, academic labs like the Temple University, uh, University of Tokyo, Antwerp, up to more advanced academic sites like the FMP, like if, uh, this is a pharmacological screening lab, uh, uh, the biggest one in Germany. Uh, or high-end uh, European uh, institutions like the ETH in Zurich, up to uh, other industry partners, for instance, Promiger. They have a couple of our instruments. They develop their assays with the Spark and the Spark Sido. Uh, so whenever it's it's about Promiger assays, it's the perfect fit to our readers. Uh, but also microplate providers like Griner Bio One uh, work with our readers because. Uh, they uh, want to, let's say, have the demand to pick the best possible solution with the highest quality on the market. Good. So what it is uh, all about, uh, or what, 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 what it all is about, uh, is described in dedicated application notes. So I'm highlighting here these notes. Um, they are all available for you. Uh, if you have interest, please come back to us later on. Uh, we will send you the specific collateral uh, so that you can read yourself and uh, dive into the details if you're interested. So just to give you a quick overview, the first note I want to highlight here is, uh, uh, is focusing on uh, the uh, evaluation of or the analysis of apoptosis uh, using the imaging functionality of the reader and the multicolor application, so the multicolor algorithm that I that I explained, and this customer specifically uh, is also using an Opera Phoenix and wanted to understand the performance of a cyto compared to the Phoenix for a specific application. To make it clear, please, this is not a competitor of the cyto. It's just another instrument that can do imaging, but it's much, much more uh, um, yeah, elaborated in that area than the Cyto. So the Cyto gives access to imaging, whereas the Opera Phoenix is dedicated to imaging, also confocal fluorescence imaging, where we are not in at all. However, and this is the important learning, the customer found that, the, that for this specific apoptosis assay, we offer the same, if not even better quality. So we cannot look inside the cell because we don't have the resolution to do intracellular applications. I think this is something you have already realized. We cannot do granular counting or something. We cannot take confocal images. But for a simple apoptose assay to say how many percent of the cells are dying apoptotically, how many are dying necrotically, and how many are still alive, you don't need to use an Opera Phoenix. Do it with a Cyto, it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more straightforward, it's easier to use. And they now use the, uh, the Spark Cyto for assay development to keep the Opera Phoenix free for really actual phenotypic screens where the system is dedicated to. 
or where they are use where they use the system for, let's say. Another example of apoptosis is uh, from the ETH in Zurich. And what you can see here is they made time courses up to 72 hours inside our reader, uh, recording apoptosis in real time without any manual interaction. So that means they can combine those response curves with kinetic runs. So they see the best concentration of the compounds and the best time frame, yeah, the best incubation times within one experiment. So, and this one lady told me uh, th what she's doing now with the Spark took her uh, four individual experiments in the past to get together the data they now do with one run over three days. And one exciting thing for uh, those of you who work with Höchst, uh, Höchst is regarded to be cytotoxic, but that's actually not true. Here we need to consider the paradigm of Paracelsus. Everything can be toxic, okay? It's all about the concentration. And what they did is amazing because they downscaled the Höchst concentration to a level where it's not cytotoxic anymore, where they can use it for long-term experiments studying cell proliferation even. And important, they can leave it in the in the media, yeah? That's that's the thing. So new cells will take it up and will be stained. It's great. And that works with Höchst. And they just optimize the concentrations. Why did it work with the Cyto? Because we are so sensitive that we can even see these low concentration of Höchst and can analyze the images. Yeah. So uh, for other systems, you might need to use that concentration of Höchst to make them visible. Not so with Tiken. Okay, so uh, with that protocol, you can easily study apoptosis uh, over a long period of time without any cytotoxic effects. Then, uh, here uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Beijing Union Medical College, uh, they focused on uh, the application of the cyto for neurology. In this case, they studied uh, the neuroprotective effect uh, and they did uh, differentiation studies where they took a lot of fluorescence imaging after staining them with immunochemistry. Uh, so you can identify all the different uh, cell types immediately by with the right staining in the spark cytosol. And then they did some uh, apoptosis assays again, uh, for instance, tunnel assay, uh, where they again took images and analyzed uh, uh, to evaluate the response uh, after treatment, yeah, the apoptotic response. We have customers that use uh, the site to take images to later analyze in third party uh, for studying DNA damage. Um, so in this case, for instance, it's one example where the customer moved to image J to really get these nice histogram peaks to identify uh, the uh, uh, the sub G1 peaks to, to identify damaged DNA. We have application notes that focus on our bright field cell segmentation, uh, so on the label-free cell counting. Um, here we have a nice technical note where uh, the uh, where labs uh, from uh, Switzerland, but also from Austria were, were involved. And uh, what you can find here are various cell lines tested with different cell concentrations compared to nuclei counting. And uh, with that, you can better understand uh, the performance of our cell counting. Uh, to explain in my personal words, most of the common cell lines perfectly work over uh, a huge range of confluence uh, uh, rates. That means between 10 and 90%, it's, it's super linear. If you go a little bit be below 10% or if you go below 10% and above 90%, there can be some inaccuracies. Yeah, uh, And also if you have very exotic cell lines, the algorithm will uh, not find them. Uh, this uh, performance was also investigated in a study that focuses on drug screening in cancer cells. It was done by the EB house in, in Austria. Uh, EB stands for Epidermolysis borreliosa, which is a rare disease, uh, 
a horrible rare disease where actually uh, patients do not uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, get the adult status, let's say, so they die before they get 18 because they develop uh, severe cancer. Actually, they have uh, blizzards all uh, over their skin. If you touch them, they, they immediately start to bleed. It's also called the butterfly disease. Uh, so, yeah, emotionally very, very interesting topic, and they really benefited from the cell counting function. Uh, to make a long story short, they, can, they could dramatically improve the efficiency of their research, decrease uh, their, their um, yeah, the, the costs that they have, and also optimize assays, uh, downscaling them uh, with the capabilities of the cyto. Uh, they could see things they have not seen before because they were not able to see them and 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 that's the thing yeah many customers just live with artifacts they're not aware of the spark cider is a tool to identify them and to overcome them so again it's not always about being the fastest and the most most sensitive one on the market uh, for Tekken, it's important to deliver robust data sets yeah for more high quality research and this is what also the Brightfield cell segmentation can help for. Uh, we, the Temple University in US investigated the Spark Cyto for monoclonality verifications due to the whole well imaging capability. It's perfect to develop cell lines, to automate that approach to a certain extent, uh, and to verify if clones uh, result from a single, from a single cell uh, uh, as, yeah, needs to be done for, for different purposes. Of course, uh, please, uh, it's not a high throughput solution for uh, cell line development or for antibody production. It's more an academic solution that semi-automates the workflow. There is still some manual assessments required here in that regard. Another example for cell line development, and this I already mentioned, was done with at the Goethe University in Frankfurt, in Germany, where they investigated the infection of SARS-CoV-2 with a new developed cell model, uh, and they have developed the cell model together with the Spark Cyto. And what they actually used is the confluence and the roughness readout, as you can see here, to identify syncytia formation. Um, uh, by the way, uh, most of these application nodes are also based on scientific papers. Um, again, I can give you the link to the, to, the, to the publication, for instance, in this case, where you also have some nice videos that show the syncytia formation, all recorded with the Spark Cyto. And the exciting thing is simply here, so their take home message is that with the roughness factor, they can see uh, the cytopathic effect much earlier than with the commonly uh, used approach of crystal violet stain, where you actually uh, uh, analyze the detachment of the cells, which you can, by the, by the way, do with the spark cyto in a label-free manner using the confluence readout. But this is not everything. They also did, for instance, um, 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 uh, virus inhibition studies here, uh, all done with the Spark Cyto in the imaging module. Yeah, and then last but not least here, uh, and that brings me really to the end of my presentation, uh, two examples uh, where uh, the Spark Cyto is applied for 3D imaging and uh, analysis. Uh, here we work together with Predictive Oncology. Predictive Oncology is providing 3D platforms to study various forms of, of, of cancers, uh, focusing on different organs, uh, as here shown, example for breast cancer, 3D models, and uh, some uh, 3D models for angiogenesis. And uh, another example here where a third party program, namely ImageJ was used, was here for the uh, tube formation assay. So actually uh, what, what they investigated is this, the tube formation after treatment with some compounds where you see actually the analysis result and the object mass coming from ImageJ. Because this is nothing that the Spark Cyto can do with our own software. Uh, also in these notes, there was always the combination of the imaging with uh, luminescence readout 
mainly they are using the cell type, the Cloacephro Promega, to study the cell viability after treatment. So if you are in, interested in more details of one of the nodes or in any other nodes, uh, please come back to us and we will provide you with this additional information and collaterals. You can also watch some webinars uh, if you uh, yeah, if you are more the, the visual guy, uh, because most of these application notes have also been presented in webinars where we, together with our customers, present uh, the results to a broader audience. All of them are available on the Keegan homepage. Uh, again, here, that's the story on the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Uh, here is some very interesting um, uh, webinar from together with Promega and all of the real-time uh, uh, cell assay offers they have, uh, but also about the new artificial intelligence based label free cell counting. There are two exciting webinars to watch on demand whenever you like. And next week, there's still the chance to register for another webinar. Uh, that is also focusing on 3D, but uh, here we work together with another company, uh, namely Sun Bioscience. Uh, they um, came up with a nice plate that is called the Gree 3D plate uh, that is used to generate organoids uh, in U-shaped uh, 96 well uh, wells, but multiple organoids per well. And they combined uh, this plate with the cell type the glow readout and the cell tox screen readout again from mega assays measured on the spark side so really interesting uh, we are stepping into the world of 3d more and more there will be also future developments i can share some secrets uh, with you so there will be new things launched next year on 3d uh, for the spark side also when you are into that or interested into that watch that webinar what is possible today and watch out for news in the future because there will be more to tell. And with that, I'm ready with my presentation. Please visit our homepage uh, if you are interested in more details. Reach out to us with your specific questions. And uh, with that, I'm happy to answer uh, your questions now. Right. Thank you so much, Benny, for the presentation. I think it was really insightful and in seeing all the applications you can actually run on the Spark Cytos system and all the benefits of using such a system in your laboratory. I don't see any questions as yet, so while maybe um, attendees are typing their questions into the chat or Q&A section, just a reminder that this recording will also be available on our website and we'll also create a link from our website to the site uh, that Ben as mentioned with the TCAN additional webinars, so you can easily direct to that site without any, any issues. Um, just a reminder to please post the questions in the chat or the Q&A function um, to see if we can answer any questions that you might have. Uh, maybe one question from me, Benno, just to get started. The image analyzer software looked very interesting. Is that a standard um, item or catalog that's included with a Spark Cyto, or mm -hmm. does that need to be purchased separately? No. So the, the image analyzer software is a, a completely cost-free software that uh, will is always installed on uh, the PC uh, or on the instrument control unit, as we call it, that we ship together with the Spark Cyto. So every Spark Cyto will come with a dedicated PC. On that PC, there is Spark Control and Image Analyzer already installed. Um, the image analyzer can only handle Spark Cyto images and is tailored to the specific applications. This is also why it's free of any cost, uh, because it can be not broadly uh, applied to any other products or whatever. And also when it comes up to the capabilities, it's still limited compared to third party uh, image analysis software or to, let's say, dedicated solutions like the Harmony software from Perkin Elmer, for instance, which is really a powerful image analysis software. Uh, here, the image analyzer is super easy to use. So it's self-explaining. There is no training needed and it's tailored to optimize the analysis results. That's it. 
Okay. Yeah. So right, <clears throat> we have uh, also some for those who are really interested in the. Um, we can have uh, individual follow-up calls where I could also share some screencasts. Yeah, if there is really a, a high interest on the product, we can plan that in as a second step. Right. Thank you, Brenna. Appreciate it. And we have two questions from our, some of our attendees. Are there any built-in analysis tools for the signal co-localization into the Spark software? Um, so uh, not yet. So uh, co-localization is nothing that we support um, directly, let's say. So some customers are uh, first of all using the 10x objective and then uh, use the images in third-party software to analyze for co-localization. Uh, that works. Here the image quality is good enough. Uh, but you should be really uh, able to do it on pixel level. Yeah? And that is not supported in our software. What you can do is you can use the multicolor analysis app to get an understanding about the localization of the fluorophores within the cell. But a dedicated co-localization analysis needs to be done in ImageJ at this point. Great, thank you so much. And then a follow-up question is possibilities to assay intracellular cytokine or signaling protein staining similar to flow, uh, protein flow cytometry or to flow cytometry, sorry. Yeah, so that that is something that would work with a user-defined approach. So uh, as long as it's intracellular and it's not about the localization inside the cell uh, or uh, let's say a, a intensity distribution inside the cell, then we can do it no matter of what you stain. Yeah, This is also why we call it cytometer because we take the images to uh, do cytometric analysis. And that's uh, not only related to the applications that I showed, but also, for instance, to uh, stain some uh, cell surface proteins or whatever. So for um, differentiation studies, whatever. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Benan. I don't see any additional questions at this time. So while we're busy waiting to see if any more questions do pop up, I just want to say again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to present the solutions from the Spark site to any applications of the system to us as well. We really do appreciate it. Absolutely welcome. It was a pleasure for me to present all the details to you. I don't see any more questions, so I will stop with the recording right now. Just a reminder that the recording will be available on our website for on-demand viewing.